One of the most revolutionary things in Pokemon Go was the Pokemon Go Plus. It came out and allowed you to play Pokemon Go without ever having to look at your phone. However, there were some downsides with this device because it was vibrating, it was hard to catch with sometimes, and there were some connection issues. So then they came out with the Pokeball Plus, which was the next evolution, and that one it was good. However, the sizing and in your pocket was not my favorite thing that I've ever had. However, now they have just released their third version, and that is going to be the Pokemon Go Plus Plus. So today we're going to check out this Pokemon Go Plus Plus to see if it is going to be worth your time, energy, and effort, and especially money to invest in in Pokemon Go. So, welcome to the Trainer Club. Here we go! So we are in Toronto, Canada, and we are heading to Best Buy to pick up a Pokemon Go Plus Plus. So we're gonna make our way through the store, find out where you can get that Pokemon Go Plus Plus, and bring it home for us today. <laughs> And we have found the new Pokemon, which is going to be Kamala. A little cute Pokemon going on here. So this is going to be the first time we'd encounter this for the event. And it's going to be part of our journey. So now we can officially get to the Pokemon Go Plus Plus because I did not want to catch this Pokemon in the back end. I wanted the uh, Pokedex entry together. Let's go ahead and check this Pokemon out. This Pokemon is a normal type Pokemon, 1948. Nothing crazy. But time for the main event of the video. Let's get in. And we officially have our Pokemon Go Plus Plus. Here is going to be the package. And here is going to be the reverse side so we are going to go ahead and unbox this thing together and see what my thoughts and opinions are on it so the top here has a little bit of tape right here so I suggest cutting that if you're trying to keep the box in place like maybe you don't like the box or whatever that is and you want to return it all right in the moment we have all been waiting for as I ripped the box already ah, the Pokemon Go Plus Plus okay actually first take right now it's actually much smaller than I actually had anticipated it to be okay well it's kind of stuck in there so let's go ahead and open this first so here's going to be the top of this right here we are going to have what looks to be something yellow okay so we do have a clip that is magnetic and this then can go into the bottom of the Go Plus. We have already opened one already. And then we also come with a surprising USB-C to USB charging cable, okay? So it's actually a pretty nice cable. Has the Nintendo brand on one of the ends. So real nice cable, pretty efficient. Once again, as these devices usually come, not super long as far as what the cable is, a foot approximately. And then last but not least, we have the Pokemon Go Plus Plus, all right? So this is the palm of my hand, and this is the size of the device. It's actually smaller than I had thought. I had originally thought that it was going to be the size of a hockey puck, but it is definitely not the size of a hockey puck. So there's my palm. I don't have huge hands. There's the back and there is going to be the width of it. So a little bit fatter towards the middle, but the end uh, seems pretty efficient. There's the charger port right there. That's gonna be the pass through right here where you can put this yellow piece in if you want to have this. So we don't need this on it right now. If you wanna go ahead and pass that through, that would be like this. And then you can go ahead and have that go all the way through, which I think I'm gonna opt out of right now, but that does make a cool gadget to put around your wrist. As Scott and I were talking, would have been really cool if they would have given you the option to have a blue or red one, which I'm sure at some point they probably will have a third party make these. And yeah, there you have it. Pokemon Go Plus Plus. Let's jump into seeing how efficient this thing is at catching Pokemon. And then we're going to start the research as well. All right, so we're getting ready to go ahead and connect this. So one cool thing on top is this button right here. Okay, so this button is an indicator to see what the power level is. So if I go ahead and put push this, a blinking red light means it's low. If it blinks twice, it means it's greatly reduced, yellow. Uh, yellow blinked once is slightly reduced and steady green means mostly charged. So if I go ahead and click it here, that's a twice blink. This is right out of the package. So right out of the package, more than likely you guys are gonna get a greatly reduced battery. And then the battery status while charging, blinking red means it's empty, steady orange means charging and steady green means it's fully charged. And I highly suggest from previous devices that I've had, once the device is fully charged, you guys do not leave this in over night, I would say to kind of like get a feel for how long it does take to charge this device, which hopefully I will have an answer for you by the end of the video. Once you do fully charge this device,
device, do not leave it in overnight because these batteries on these devices are a little bit smaller and I have seen devices die out because of leaving them overcharging overnight, which means kind of like an oversurge. And the reason why I found that out was uh, with my e-bike, they highly encouraged me not to overcharge my e-bike because of this scenario. So I was like, oh, well maybe that's the reason some of my auto catchers have died. So here's gonna be the device. And then one other thing is how to turn this device on silent. So in order to turn it on silent, what you do is push the top button and then hold down the main button for more than a second. And it will vibrate twice to enter silent mode and then press and hold the buttons until the accessory vibrates once and that will be turning it off. And it says also alarms, sound, vibration, and light are also suspended while in silent mode. Obviously you can track sleep as well and you can suspend communication, meaning it says that you can uh, turn off wireless communication while sleeping, for example, like when it's on airplane mode. So uh, you're gonna have to go to the compatible app for that to be able to do so and that would be on the Pokemon Go plus plus dot com to be able to set that up. Okay, but we're gonna focus on this device as a Pokemon Go device, so let's get it set up. So first and foremost, we are going to have to enter this Pokemon device into connecting mode. So just clicking on that button, we'll enter it in there. We'll go ahead and go into the settings, and then we're gonna go ahead and go into connected services and devices, accessory devices, and then I'm gonna go ahead and click there, and then boom, the Pokemon Go plus plus will show up. I'll go ahead and connect it, and I just got the vibration, and it is pairing, okay? So the indicator light on your Pokemon Go plus plus should now be solid white, which it is. Pairing process is taking place. And this one up here, if you turn this on, it will be enable Pokeball auto throw. Auto throw will only use Pokeballs, not great or ultra balls. Enable Pokestop auto spin. So if I turn either of these on, it will do the auto catching. And then so button throw will be disabled if you run out of whichever type of Pokeball you select. And then we have another feature down here that does says enable quick reconnect mode. If disabled, you'll need to press the main button on your Pokemon Go plus plus to reconnect it. So I think that if this is turned on. Okay, well, apparently it already disconnected, so let's go ahead and reconnect that. Yes, pair. Press the main button and the side button at the same time. All right, there we go. We have Pikachu uh, yelling at us right now. Okay, first allow your sleep data to be shared with Pokemon Go, okay. Before you go to again, this is gonna tell you how to do it, how to track your sleep. Before you go to bed, begin a sleep session. Do this by pressing the main button of your Pokemon Go Plus until you see the blue light flash once. When you wake up, end your sleep session. Do this by pressing the main button on your Pokemon Go Plus until you see multicolor lights flashing on this. Share your data with Pokemon Go. And that would be probably why there's the magnet clip so that you can clip this device to you while you sleep, which I'm not recommending that, but if you guys do choose to do that, you can. And then with the quick reconnect and mode enabled, you can reconnect your nearby Pokemon Go Plus Plus to your paired smartphone device by simply tapping the Pokemon Go Plus Plus icon on the map view or in settings. If this feature is disabled, you'll need to press the main button on your Pokemon Go Plus Plus to reconnect it. Okay, so what it seems like is happening is that if you have this enabled, it will leave this device on and is all you have to do is be on the main screen and click this button up in the corner, which we will show you here in a second if you guys are not familiar with it. But if it's off, it seems like it will maybe conserve a little bit of batteries. You will have to manually reconnect both times, but if it is off, you'll have to click this device and then click that button. And you can earn rewards by tracking your sleep. The longer you sleep, the more rewards you earn. You can also choose what time you receive these rewards. Okay, so that's, I mean, it's kind of interesting. You can even receive Stardust, Buddy Hearts, and stickers. Now it's time to get some rest and done. Okay, well, we're not time to get some rest. So the button throw Pokeball selection. This is one of the biggest things everybody is asking about. Okay, so what do we do with button throw Pokeball selecting. Button throw will be disabled if you run out of whichever type of Pokeball. So if we have enable Pokeball throw, that's gonna be the auto. And if we have the enable stop spin, that will be auto. The enable Pokeball auto throw will only be Pokeballs. And the button throw selection, you can choose which one you do use. So we will go back to the main menu here. Okay, so right now we are targeting a Mareep. We have 162 Great Balls. Let's go ahead and push this button. Two and three and we caught the Mareep right there. Let's see which uh, which ball did we use on that one. Yep, we did use a great ball, so that is going there. So caught another Pokemon. Uh, we did not catch that one, actually. Let's try again. That will be a slack off, and we also did not catch that one. Is that using great balls? That is using great balls. Try round number three, and once again, we didn't catch it. Okay, round number four. Nope, and that's going to be an Abra. You can see if you caught those things by just simply looking in your bag real quick. 
Yep, we did catch that Abra. This is gonna be a poker stop. So one, two, three. So every time you get a vibration of a light, that's gonna mean that you got an item. One, two, three. Okay, so three items right there. So one last thing I did wanna talk about is when you do put it into silent mode, it does not turn off vibration. This device will always seem to vibrate. So if you are in, let's say a work meeting, not that you should be playing Pokemon Go in a work meeting, but if you say you do play Pokemon Go in a work meeting and it's very quiet in between people talking or whatever that is, and you have this device in your pocket, it uh, will be vibrating. So so just to keep that as a heads up right now. Okay, so this is the button in the top corner that we talked about. So if you have it turned on where it will be able to reconnect is all you have to do is just click that and it will go, which means to me that this device will always be on. However, if you do not have the auto connect enabled, you will have to click this button and then click that right there. So this is it auto catching right now. Obviously I didn't do it, but that's a vibration every single time you see that. And the auto catching should only be using Pokeballs. So I am gonna pop a lore module so you guys can see this device in action right now. So it's kind of a strong vibration. So the Pokestop is gonna go ahead and refresh here. So we will get the auto spin. Here's the uh, sound barrier of this Pokeball Plus Plus vibrating for you guys. Okay, so now let's get into some testing in my first initial um, review of this thing. Okay, so the size, pretty good, right? Like, this is my hand. I don't have overly large hand, but it's, you know, maybe a third-ish of my palm right there, right? It's actually a pretty good size. It's not super wide either. It's uh, much more efficient than I had thought it to be. So overall, this device as a size ratio, I think they did a really good job on this. Also with the rope pass-through so that you can put this through right here and you can uh, get this onto your wrist. I think that's kind of a, a little cool accessory and then they have the magnets so you can sleep with it when i did do a, an initial review about this device i think it's cool that they can turn it into sleep mode so then it maybe just becomes a gyroscope but this device does have electronics in it and i'm not the biggest fan of having electronics around my head my body while i'm sleeping even on a consistent basis because it is tracking something so there has to be some type of device going on with this to be able to track something it's not like you can completely like take the battery out and remove all electronics so as far as tracking your sleep with this. I mean, the rewards do seem like maybe they would be decent, but I'm not going to be sleeping with the Pokemon Go Plus. The other thing that I as a massive downside to me is that you cannot turn off vibration. As you guys did see me leaving it on the table, it's literally vibrating and moving itself across the table by itself, which is problematic for me. I enjoy having a discrete device, not really a device that is going to be uh, announcing itself every single time it finds a Pokemon. And then it's going to give you the one ball shake, two ball shake vibration, three ball shake vibration vibration and then it's going to blink lights and all these things right so if i wanted to go to an edm concert i would do that i don't want that happening in my pocket at all times but it does give you the option to throw great and ultra balls but you cannot do that on an auto catching mode you have to do that by clicking the button so that is something that does interest to me but i do want to compare this and play with this to see how it does go i did in the initial thing throw a couple great balls and i thought it was going to increase my catch chances and two of the six pokemon that we targeted with the great balls were caught and four of them ran away. That doesn't give an, a huge sample size of what we're doing, but we're gonna go ahead and do a little bit of testing out on the streets right now. And then I'm gonna come back and give you guys my official overview of should you buy this? It's approximately $50, I believe. We, have, we spent 75 Canadian dollars, so 50, 55 dollars. Uh, I'll go ahead and check that here in a second and then I'm gonna bring you back with my official review. So let's go start playing with the Pokemon Go Plus Plus. So we are in Toronto right now, so it's $74.99 in Canadian. And then in the USA, it's selling for $54.99. So it is definitely a little bit more expensive. Um, I was able to get it in Best Buy here in Toronto. And so Best Buy is a carrier of it in store, at least here. When I'm looking at it over here, it says it looks like uh, you can get it in three days or there might have in-store availability. So you might want to check if you're trying to get this device in store. Yeah, pick up ready on Thursday, July 20th. Um, and this would be in Mission Viejo. So they don't have it back where I live in California, but we were able to get one here in Canada. So that's pretty cool if you guys are looking to. So definitely check your local areas if you're looking for, but definitely stay tuned to get my official uh, recommendations. If I would recommend spending 55 plus dollars with tax, if you do have tax in your state on this device. Okay, so we officially have our devices Scott is going to be using a gotcha right and we are going to be using a Pokemon Go Plus Plus 
but we're not going to be doing auto spin. Scott will be doing auto spin. We are going to be using the ultra ball setting. So if you have to do this, you go into the settings, connected devices, accessories. See, I have enable Pokemon auto throw off, can spin stops, and I'm going to be using ultra balls, which means I'm going to have to click the button and we're going to do our daily adventure incense together. And once that is done, we'll compare to see how many Pokemon we've caught. Yep, great. There you go. So we are going out here. As you guys can see, it's really going to depend on how fast I can click this. Uh, it doesn't have as fast of a mechanism as something like the auto spin feature of this or the auto spin feature of uh, another third party device like Gotcha. So we are going to click all of these. Two, three, and seems like we are catching a decent amount. We are using Ultra Balls right now. So we are going to be depleting our Ultra Ball count as we do spin and continue on. Just to show you our catching with Ultra Balls every single time I click right there, it will go ahead and deplete an Ultra Ball right there on the menu. So every time something pops up, does feel like I am catching a decent amount of things. And let's talk about the research here as well. We have catch 20 Pokemon in Pokemon Go Plus using a Pokemon Go Plus auto feature. This was his catch with Great Balls, uh, spin 15 stops, and then we have track your sleep for seven days to be able to complete this research. So if you are getting this device soon, um, you are gonna have to track your sleep for seven days. So we'll see what the rewards do come from that as well. Okay, so we're actually targeting a Snorlax right now. Oh man, it ran away. <laughs> I was like, okay, maybe we'll catch a, uh, a Snorlax here. Unfortunately, it did not. I'm actually gonna try to hold down on the button right now and see what happens here. Maybe it will auto catch if I hold the button down. Okay, so this is an activated button right here. So the Pokeball Plus, if you do have something hitting on top, it will kind of like create an auto catch feature, auto spin feature. Unfortunately, you cannot do that on this device, which is kind of a bummer. You can't hold down or maybe put a rubber band and then a coin on top of the button and catch a bunch of stuff. And the Snorlax is up. Neither Scott nor I have caught one Snorlax. Will we be able to catch this one? One shake, two shakes, three shakes, Nope. All right, so we have finished up and our adventure incense, our summary here was gonna be 16 Pokemon. And Scott, you said you did 12? 12 Pokemon okay. incense. And then for all the Pokemon that I have caught went from this Teddy Ursa all the way down to the Starly right here. So 48 total Pokemon. How about you, Scott? Actually, it was 58. 58 Pokemon, okay. So I was using the Pokemon Go Plus Plus with Ultra Balls hand clicking and Scott, I was using the uh, Gotcha, and I was doing regular balls on auto catch. On auto catch. So it appears that by using auto catch, it's able to pick up a little bit more Pokemon throughout. Maybe not quite as efficient, because I didn't see that many go out there. But what do you think the, the hardest Pokemon to catch that you got was? I, well, we had an opportunity for three Snorlax, got zero of the Snorlax. Yeah, likewise, I got zero Snorlax. Yeah, and you know, I, I noticed that the new Pokemon, we had three opportunities, two I missed, and then I hand ca caught the third. Okay. So, you know, I, I, the normals, I have a ton of normals. I mean, yeah. it was, it's all the regular stuff that all I was able to get. Stuff. But I can tell you, I went through a minimum of 128 regular Pokeballs. Wow. In 15 minutes. In 15 minutes. That's crazy. And for myself, I think the biggest thing that I caught was this 1491 Hariyama. I also caught a 718 Mareep, and I used approximately, so we started at about 560. We used about 50-ish Ultra Balls, probably more because we were also spinning stops. So I'd say approximately 70 Ultra Balls we used on that total walk in comparison to 120. He caught more Pokemon, so it's definitely more efficient, but at the same time, I'm clicking all the time, and as I'm vlogging and doing things, you know, there is a latency issue with clicking as opposed to the efficiency of the gotcha. Yeah, I think we should try it again with regular incense and see what we do there. Yeah, all right, round two. Okay, and round number two, so we're much more controlled about this. Scott had a great idea. So, Scott, what are you gonna do? I have 100 Pokeballs, and I opened up 100 slots and we're gonna do one 30 minute incense and that'll give us a really good indicator of what catch rate versus Pokeball is in that 30 minute period of time. Right, and we also have our stop spins turned off, so yep. we're not gonna gain anything. And if you guys check out mine, I have 100 great balls, so I did delete 57 great balls and we have 6,100 out of 6,200 for a grand total of 100 spots. Yep. So we both have the exact same controls. We're gonna go for one 30 minute incense and then we're gonna see what we get. All right, let's do it. All right, let's do it. All right, ready? And three, two, one, and go. And then we're gonna go ahead and connect. Grab the Pokemon Go Plus Plus. You're and... connected and I'm connected. All right, we're on. let's we're do it. Life. 30 minutes. Who's gonna get the Snorlax? All right, we'll see. Okay, so we are uh, 
five minutes in on the incense and I have already disconnected, but I do have the auto reconnect enabled. Okay, so it did turn it on and so all you had to do is just click the button on the screen. I didn't have to push anything, but the one thing I am gonna note here is that on the gotcha, you have more control of, you can turn off spinning Pokestops right. in the Pokemon Go Plus. On this device, if I'm using the Pokeball to catch, meaning I'm using the Great Balls right now, it forces me to spin Pokestops as well with this device, which I totally was not expecting that to be. So yeah, like right here, I don't have the auto spin on, but I can't turn off not targeting Pokestops, which is kind of a problem when you're managing the 12, 12 kilometer eggs thing. You hatched all your eggs, you wanna you know, stock oh, up wow, on yeah. eggs. If you're using this device, you can't go around that unless you're only strictly using auto catch and you're not using the great and the ultra ball. So that feature is only good if you have a full stock of eggs and you don't care about getting more eggs into your bag through Pokestops. All right, and Scott has officially hit the cap for 100 Pokeballs, so we're gonna stop right here. Uh, we got about 25 minutes. Yep. And the reason why we're stopping is because I can't keep going with my great balls because like I said just a second ago, I can't not spin stops when I'm in the non-auto click mode right there. Okay, so let's check out our bags. So I caught a total of 65 Pokemon. Scott. Okay, and this time I caught a total of 51 Pokemon. Okay, and anything out of the ordinarily large or crazy that you may think was kind of out there. I caught a, a CP832 slack off. I was using great balls this time, so I think that's, you know, a pretty high Pokemon. Probably less chance that a Pokeball would catch that one. But besides that, oh, and a 713 Lanoon, I would say, yeah. and 1120 Teddy Ursa. So there definitely seems to be a little bit more kind of higher CP Pokemon in here. Yeah, nope, nothing. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. No. Okay, so I did a grand total of what? 14 more Pokemon caught than you did yeah. in that time period. Now, a note I want to give you is we're finding that I get a significantly bigger uh, amount of drift and that's going on and that the gotcha will catch even on that drift mode. Yeah. So that actually adds to the how fast you use your Pokeballs right. and your numbers. And the second thing I think that's fairly significant is my standard range for catching Pokeballs seems to be significantly bigger than the new device. Yes, it does. Like when we were walking by, I was like, oh, I didn't catch that, the Wulu. And Scott's like, oh, I have nothing, right? Like, cause his already caught it all, right? Yeah. So it, it seems like his is, although may not be as efficient, it's giving you more chances to catch more things. Things. Right. And for our final test, we are going to do the range test. So we're going to put connected devices right next to each other, one with a gotcha device, one with a Pokemon Go Plus Plus device, and then I'm going to walk away from these devices to see how long it takes before these devices disconnect, basically testing the strength and the reliability of the Bluetooth. And then beyond that, we are also going to then recap right after it. All right, so let's do it. Okay, so on the right, we're gonna use the Pokemon Go Plus Plus, which is a pretty cool feature that you can just hit that and connect it, but once again, very, very aggressive vibration here. And then we're gonna go ahead and connect the gotcha device on that one. And then we're gonna slowly walk away from here and see what happens. Okay, so this is where the devices are right here, right? And there's gonna be the auto catchers. And so let me take you to where we disconnected at. Both devices happened at the exact same time as you guys did see it. And then we did come all the way down here, all the way down this hallway, all the way to right, literally here is gonna be where both devices disconnected at exactly the same time. I was holding the devices and they both flashed the Pokemon Go Plus Plus did the white flash and then the other device kind of did like this circle with like an X through it or something like that. So both have very powerful Bluetooth devices. Both are extremely efficient. Let's get into the review. What do you guys think? And for the official recap, so what would I choose? For me personally, the Pokemon Go Plus Plus, I will tell you the positives and the negatives of what I got. So if you guys do see, remember the two blinks means that the battery is significantly reduced. We've had this thing running for about four hours. So the th problem with these devices, they vibrate, they blink, and you cannot turn that off. You can turn the sound off if you don't want it to like make a Pikachu noise, but you can't turn the actual vibration off. And the vibration is an absolute battery killer. So that's problematic for me. Having it significantly reduced in about four to five hours is problematic, especially when I'm at a go fest and I'm running in a device for what, you know, eight hours straight potentially. So that is a problem. I'm pretty impressed by the size. I think the device looks cool. I think it's probably one of their more sleeker devices. Oh. 
as I drop it. Pretty strong Bluetooth. I really like the connectivity where if you click the auto connect, that means that the device is already pretty much registered to go on. So all you do is click the little Pokeball on the screen and then that goes on. As far as the great and the ultra balls, I think that is a really cool addition. Um, the downside to that is like I said, let's say that you are trying to stack up 12, 12 kilometer eggs or you're trying to get a certain amount of eggs or you're saving for seven kilometer eggs, you have open egg spots. Unfortunately, even though you do have to press the button to hit the Pokestop and it does have a different vibration than encountering a Pokemon, you cannot get it to not target Pokestops which ugh, that's a big downside for me. And then also, since it is a little bit slower with you actually manually clicking, as you do go past Pokemon, you can miss Pokemon in comparison to things that are the auto catchers, such as the gotchas, where they spin and catch things so fast, they're almost like catching or attempting to catch things outside of the sight line, which is an impressive feat. But I think that this device definitely has its purpose. I mean, maybe if I couldn't play a calm day and I, I really needed to play a calm day and I wanted to try to catch as many shines as possible this device would be fantastic to have i don't think it's a bad thing to have in your arsenal obviously you know usd it's $55 plus tax if there's tax applicable in your state. So it's not a super cheap device, but as an everyday device for me personally, I will not be playing with it. Will I have it with me at all times? The answer for that is definitely gonna be a yes, because like I said, there was a calm day where I, I absolutely had to be away from my phone and I couldn't play, which is not very common. And I really wanted to throw great balls and ultra balls. I would definitely use this device to be able to do so, even though, you know, during calm days, I don't really need to worry about spinning poke stops for the most part, because I'm okay with whatever comes from from those stops. So this device definitely serves a purpose. However, for me and my recommendation, it is not gonna be my main purpose. So if you are not okay with having multiple of these devices and traveling with them and carrying them and having different devices for different things, would I suggest this is your number one purchase? I would say no, because I personally don't like flashing lights. You can see them through the short pockets as it's vibrating. These shorts are a little bit more like athletic shorts. So they're not as thick as other things, but I do believe you might even be able to see it through jeans, potentially how thick the jeans are or not and things like that. So there are definitely ups, there are definitely downs. $55, I give you guys the complete synopsis of everything. Not quite as efficient. The great and ultra balls are absolutely amazing. I think it's a good device to have, but if you're on a budget and you have to choose one, this would not be the device that I would choose first and foremost, but that is totally up to you guys. And let me know in the comments below if you plan to pick up one. And then of course the research is there, but you have to sleep with it for seven days. So maybe we're gonna be sleeping with our Pokemon Go Plus Plus and uh, completing the research. So thank you guys for tuning in as always to all my likers, comments, subscribers, Patreon members. Everybody takes your support, subscription, and participation to the next level. I'm gonna see you guys out in the next video. Peace. I want to take this time to thank everybody who supports me in every facet. It means the world to me and an extra special thank you to all my Patreons. I greatly appreciate the extra support to continue to allow me to pursue Pokemon Go full time, allowing me to create my daily video uploads in the most timely fashion for everyone's benefit. Plus, I get the amazing experience of sharing my creative processes behind the scenes and rating all around the globe with select upper tiers. Thank you everybody for being a part of the Trainer Club. You all mean the absolute world to me and I will see you guys out on the next video.